ring and put to pay to him in the twinkling of an eye. And away goes Schwarzer from Pillaging and Muck Arena. And Schwarzer, a brilliant winner in the William Inglis Classic. Pillaging second, Muck Arena third, and Sportsman was fourth. Then half Hennessy, Royal Perler, followed home then by Desert Money, Planogram, Daneville, Al Megdam, and Fuji Beauty was absolute. Oh, what a demoralising win, thank you. He went past pillaging. He'd, he would have given pillaging a coal so quickly that he raced past him. And uh, he was spot on today. But I tell you what, he didn't jump all that brilliantly from the inside gate. But they went like the clappers. The extra distance helped him today of 1,200 metres. And if he's not a top quality colt, I haven't seen one. Number one, Schwarzer has paid $2.80 and $1.30. Number two, pillaging second, the pundits were right, the favourites battled it out, $1.20 with the Newcastle cult a mile too good. And Mook Arena's run third from Canberra, Barbara Joseph, number four, and has paid a dividend of $2.80. The uh, Quinella here, and it is 210, exact a 420, trifecta 3360. The first four, one, two, four, and three, sportsman fourth at uh, 8320. And the special did with the scratching in the next of Impregnable at 2.50 on the Daily Double. Schwasser by Dane Hill Dancer, making a, a great fist of it at stud, Dane Hill Dancer, out of the lunchtime air. Great selection, bred by Mr. R.M. Daisley, and is owned by the Wallace family. They've enjoyed a great deal of good fortune, and they share ownership, Terry and Di Wallace and their children, with Paul Perry, the trainer, and his wife, Clarine. Trained, of course, by Paul Perry and Lenny Beasley in the saddle. A, a win in the stamp that this horse is a real golden slipper prospect. 110.12, that'll stand as a race record until broken. It's one, two, four, and three, pillaging second, Damien Oliver for Lee Fried and Mook Arena, a Mook Adama gilding, ran a very good race, trained by Barbara Joseph Rodney Quinn, and three sportsmen had his chance fourth. Too good was number one, repeating 281.30 he paid. Any other runner, really. Jeune's heart in the market, although a touch easy, Countback has been easy. El Bacaccia rode steady, and Final Vixen also steady. But the real move has been for repeat performance. The Gouch, he's going for three, nearly ready. We've got Lady Dance and Lady of the Dance here, so just be mindful of that. This is Lady of the Dance coming up into the line, the gray. Lady Dance is on the inside. Repeat performance to move in. Buminara Gold and El Bacaccia Road. She was scratched from Adelaide today to run here. Her efforts lately have been good. The run behind McBeal and the Ararat performance was great coming from well back, pushed off the track. Real chance here. One and a half claim only for Adrian Patterson. Buminara Gold takes the outside. So they're all in set to go. Late move for Regal Touch on course, I note. Racing now, Kinjika out fairly. Polo lounged through the head in the air, didn't jump at all well. Dark Wine got right back to the tail early. Repeat performance, jump well. Lady of the Dance is going with her, and so too Doubtful Direction along the inside, trying to lead. A lot of pace about. Polo lounge moved up to fourth, and then Lady Dance followed by Countback. Let's remember Kinjika, who's slipping through along the inside. They're followed by Zerns Hart. Elba Kutcher Road trapped about four wide. Let's remember getting up on the inside. Then Buminara Gold, well back in the field as they lead the straight as Regal Touch and Dark Wine by the 1600 Doubtful Direction lead. Lady of the Dancers second and three lengths away repeat performance in third placing. Another three length break to Polo Lounge. About a length and a half further back is Countback Zern Sart on the outside. One further back is Lady Dance and she's followed by Let's Remember one and a half to Kinjika. One final Vixen. A length and a half Elba Kutcher Road who's got in now closer to the road in this fast run race. Waratah Special is next followed by Regal Touch. Buminara Gold and two to Dark Wine. They go down the back at a very fast pace, a little over a 1,000 to go in doubtful direction, led by about six lengths here. Lady of the Dancers second, repeat performance, two lengths away third, and about to close on that leader. Then there's a break of four or five lengths, Jern's Hart. Another two and a half lengths away is Polo Lounge, who's on the inside of Countback. One and a half behind them, let's remember, and they're followed by Final Vixen over on the outside of Lady Dance. Elba Kutcher Road, Regal Touch starting its run, and then came Kinjika. Dark Wine commenced 
sensing its move and would need to. And then Waratah Special and Buminara Gold. Repeat performances out after this leader. Gauchi's widening the favourite up to tackle. Doubtful direction coming around the home turn. Lady of the Dance three lengths away third. The Gouch look confident peeping. Look over the shoulder. Then Jerns Hart. Elba Kutcher Road making ground the inside. Cutback is coming with Let's Remember. And Final Vixen is out wider on the course. But uh, getting down to the 200. Repeat performances tackled by Lady of the Dance. Cutback is coming. Repeat performance. Lady of the Dance. Heads are now Elba Kutcher Road and Cutback coming. It's Lady of the Dance just in front. On the outside, Cutback and Elba Kutcher Road. They hit the line. Count back. Maybe a nose, Elba Kutcher Road, who's kicked and it's close. Repeat performance next, and then came Lady of the Dance. Closely followed in the field then at the head of the other horses by Let's Remember Final Vixen, Dark Wine and Doubtful Direction. Clearer Buminara Gold, Polo Lounge, and then came Waratah Special Lady Dance, Jern's Heart and Regal Touch. On the outside, Countback looked to have a little advantage. Elba Kutcher Road kicked pretty strongly on the inside of her. We await the photo finish. Countback finishing the better and has got the money written by Karen McAvoy. Number two, Countback. Karen McAvoy first. Number five, second, Alba Katya Road. Adrian Patterson. Oh, I've beaten about a half head or so on the line when you see the uh, freeze frame. And third is another close one. Repeat performances fought tenaciously. And she's kicked back and she's got third in advance of Lady of the Dance, who'd clearly headed her in the early part of the straight. So, numbers are two, five, and three. Count back first, Elba Kutcher Road second, and repeat performance in third place. The winner, written by Karen McAvoy, trained by Dan O'Sullivan. Busy race, that one. A lot happening with a fast run race, and Gauchi trying to pinch a break on them going for home early. He was looking around for dangers coming up towards the or at the early part of the straight, but they were right there and tackling left, right and centre. And uh, this has just finished a shade the better count back to uh, get home narrowly. So in they come over here at the starting point. Splendid retreat moves up. We're waiting for Repeater and Interbank. The previous, the William English Classic, won effortlessly by the Newcastle youngster Schwa Sir Lenny Beasley beat the Victorian two pillaging Damien Oliver, four Mook Arena third and three Sportsman fourth. Other winners today, Grampians Bomber Bill, Hayden, my special Scorpio and the captive Empress. Now all is in readiness. This is race seven. They're off this time and uh, the favourite Trencher jumped out quickly. Market link will just lead Trencher settling. Mastery third followed by De Amon. And then Regal zero. Water out as Repeater followed by Betrill and out off the track is Interbank. Then Matiti Road followed by British Basker. A length and a half splendid retreat. Similar margin Sherud. And last of all is Bracing Rhythm. They head to the 1200 marker and Market link shows the way. Mastery second. De Amon moving up into third position. Passed there by Regal zero who's wide out. And Trench is getting a nice run over on the rail. Interbank is deep, followed by Batril, Repeater, British Busker, Matiti Road. Then Splendid Retreat, Sherud, and two and a half to Bracing Rhythm. Market Link leads the way as they head down the side in the direction of the halfway at the 800. And Market Link about three quarters mastery. Trencher third, De Armand fourth, so the favourites are nice and handy. In fifth posse is Batril, parked inside of Regal Zero. Two Interbank around Repeater, three or four to British Busker, then Matiti Road, Splendid Retreat. Bracing Rhythm has passed one, and that is Sherud. They're pretty strung out. At the 550 they go. And here Mastery on the outside poked his neck in front of Market Link. Rod Quinn easing Trencher away from the rails. Jimmy Cassidy riding the arm and hard. Then Betrill into bank. Regal zero followed by Repeater. And British Busker heads the remainder. Mastery straightens up a length and a half. Betrill into the clear. Trencher on the outside. De Armand next. Repeater's getting up on the inside and then into bank. Here's a good go. About four in line. Betrill. Trencher the outside. Repeater the inside. It's Batrill, Repeater, Trencher, Batrill just in front, and Batrill gets the money from Trencher and Repeater. Followed home by British Basket, De Armand, and then Mastery, Matiti Road, Splendid Retreat. Regal Zero further back was Interbank, followed by Sherud. Market Link has beaten one in, and that was Bracing Rhythm. Number 13, Batrill, written by Larry Cassidy, has taken out the Festival of Sydney Welter Handicap. Trencher tried very, very hard, but uh, as the line has been reached, Batrill has done a shade too well. Number 13, 
And on the tote in New South Wales, a big return of something like $49.30 and $9.60. Number two, Trencher, $1.50. And ten, Rapida, $3.50. The winner trained by Ken Parsons. Uh, Ken, of course, was originally based in Cowra, but uh, is now at Rose Hill. He's doing a great job. He's got uh, something like 20 horses in work and uh, a great uh, condition of that mare. Looked beautiful on the way to the barrier. She's by Don't Say Halo from Grey Fear, Grey Mare 4. And Larry Cassidy, the winning rider, 13, 2, 10 and 3 are the officials. But true, L. Cassidy first, second number two and every opportunity. Trencher written by Rod Quinn for John Hawkes. And number 10 is third, repeater Chris Munts for Gay Waterhouse. And number three, British Busker, the official fourth. Time was 136.81. And the other news in relation to margins and sectional will follow shortly. And uh, full honours to the winner. It was a nice ride by Il Cassidy. And here are the official totes. Number 13, the bookies rubbing their hands with glee. Totally unwanted on course. Shibiri favourite from Varsaleos. Ottoman, good money for it late. Just about right now. 2100 for the last. Trousers locked away the outside. Set in racing. Shabiri jumped well. Keystone dawdled out. Nottaman was slow, settling at the tail as well. IMAX has got back there too. Royal effort. And Carptonite got away well, and they're going up to head Shabiri early. Trousers on the outside. Caught three wide at the post. A lap out. Cyrenel getting up on the inside. Vasileo steadying. Then IMAX, Keystone, Black Type Magic and Ottoman. Trousers off and running after being caught wide to get in closer to the leader as they leave the straight. It's Carptonite now from Trousers who's right on the pace today. A battle linked at a half away in third place in Royal Effort. And then Cyrenel fourth on the rail. A linked at a half. Shabiri, the favourite in the gold colours, is running fifth into the back. IMAX on his inside, won Varsileos about a length to Keystone. Then Ottoman, who wants to pull a touch, leaving the straight and black type magic last. At the 1400, Carptonite in front today. He's out by two and a half, Trousers second. Third placing, three lengths away to Royal Effort. Cyrenelg on the rails, Shibiri is fourth. IMAX is fifth, sixth the outside, Varsileos. Then Keystone, Ottoman, and about three lengths away to black type magic. 1100 to go, and Carptonite left alone in front. He's out by two, Trousers Tracks him everywhere. Four lengths, maybe a shade more than to Royal Effort third. Cyrenel is fourth on the inside. And Shabiri gets a beautiful trail fifth on the outside. Followed then by IMAX on the inside. And then Varsileos, Keystone, Ottoman and Black Type Magic as last of all. As they came off the back of the 800... You can barely see these through the seagulls. And Carptonite by two lengths. Trousers second, six lengths away, Royal Effort. Another couple of lengths, Shabiri making ground on the outside. And then Cyrenel, Varsileos pulled out to make ground. Uh, they're followed by IMAX, Keystone, Ottoman second last and black type magic. Carptonite round the turn in front at the 400. He led by two. Trousers gives chase. Break then to Royal Effort. Shabiri, who just might have got into a touch of trouble there. Then Varsileos battling away down the outside. Side to coming after this leader is Trousers. It's Carptonite tackled by Trousers with 200 to go. Keystone is making a little ground and Shabiri's coming late. It's Carptonite, Trousers. Trousers is grabbing Carptonite right on the line. Coming to it, they hit it, bobbing go. Keystone kicked. I reckon he's beaten Trousers a nose. Shabiri third, then Vasileos, Keystone, and back behind them were Ottoman, and they were trailed then by Cyrenelg. A break further back then to IMAX, Royal Effort, and Black Type Magic last virtually all the way. Trousers put his nose in front of stride from the line, but I think Carptonite might have kicked and beaten him. Stand by for the numbers. In a bobbing go, the grey has kicked very, very strongly. I fancy he might get this in a... It's a bob of the head only. Six has won it. Six, Carptonite has kicked and won. Carptonite first, Greg Childs. Second to number five, Trousers, Brett Preble. And third, number four, Shabiri, written by Zach Purton. Six, five and four are the official numbers. All the way for Carptonite this afternoon. And that's when he runs his absolute uh, best races. He sat second the other day, and it was a shocking run at Mooney Valley. He was the first one beaten. But when he can roll in front, he's a totally different horse. And uh, that's what he's done today. They were one, two all of the way. Trousers looked home to the world, 100 out. He was claiming Captain Ott at every bound, but he's just missed. And Shabiri just might have been a touch unlucky. He seemed to get into a little bit of trouble in the early part of the straight. But having said that, he's been well beaten by these other two. 6-5-4, fourth going to Keystone, who ran on well late, and Varsileos fifth. 
I don't know whether he likes it. Uh, ...in the matter of weights to some of these older horses. In fact, he carries uh, the same weight as a four-year-old in Glen Idol, who's been racing so well. So for him to win this uh, with any authority would stamp him as a well above average painted thunder. $2.40, El Sarkeb, five eighty. Um, can he win after an absence of 11 months? We'll soon know. Here's Ian for his call of the last. OK, now as our home audience and Johnny join us, uh, just saying to our uh, pub and club audience and uh, also our radio friends that Painted Thunder's been very, very heavily back late here. Better on the toe, 240 and 140. Anyway, we'll see what happens. The line is taking pretty good shape up there. Damien Oliver uh, has uh, had to see stewards on a couple of occasions following the uh, William Inglis Classic. Um, stewards allege that uh, he crossed a little quickly on pillaging near the 900. That would be wrapped up after the last race, I'd imagine. Now, we're coming into race number eight and uh, Lai Moon and Telling Blow look to be the horses to enter the stores. Painted Thunder, Larry Cassidy rode the previous winner, Batrill. And Batrill defeated Trencher and Repeater, 13 to 10, and three ran fourth. Schwarzer won the William Inglis Classic this afternoon brilliantly, ridden by Len Beasley. Grampians Darren Beedman won the fifth, the fourth, Bomber Bill Damien Oliver, the third, Hayden Hugh Bowman. My special Scorpio, Rod Quinn, the second, and captive Empress Darren Beedman won the first of the day. Now, having trouble getting Glen Idle into the gates here, but uh, patience and perseverance and the skill of the gateman get him in. They lock uh, the gates behind. So we've got Lai Moon to come forward and telling Blow. In goes uh, little Luke Price on telling Blow and Lai Moon and uh, Bradley Pengelly move in. And away they go in the final event. Oh, I reckon it's a false start. It's a false start. Yep, indeedy. Well, there's a sensation for you. The last one went in, and I thought, my goodness, I was just having a look at my monitor. It was, I don't think that even got the back of the gate shut for Lai Moon. And then, all of a sudden, there was a stampede. And these horses are everywhere. Well, there is a sensation. Now, Al Sarkeb, first up today, or was going to be first up for 11 months, uh, the rider Lenny Beasley, he can't hold Al Sarkeb and uh, Al Sarkeb coming to the home corner. Lenny will be able to slow him down now. Oh, that's bad luck. By golly, that is a shame. So let's take stock here and see where the others have gone to. Um, Fondleway's gone down to the 450. Not a, that hard a gallop. Sporting chance about the 500. Ouch, Fusser and Telling Blow to about the 550. Glen Idle, not too bad with Painted Thunder. He got down to about the 800. So all these horses will be taken back round behind the stalls. They'll be vetted. And, uh, well, gee, I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be on Al Sarkeb, quite honestly, if uh, he is uh, permitted to run, because he did go hard and fast for, oh, certainly uh, 800 metres. So there's going to be quite a delay out here, Warwick Farm. A false start to race number eight. We'll call you back as soon as we have more information. Yes, they, those gates just opened prematurely and caught most of the riders off guard. In fact, one jockey had lost both irons, I noticed, and he was riding like the last of the straightbacks. Might have been, might have been this horse, Lai Moon, Brad Pengelly. So he did... Uh, painted Thunder into the red now. One dollar ninety. Shanval five forty. Glen Idle nine seventy. And Carline is at twelve dollars. In they go. Toowoomba race two is only a minute away. Two dollars seventy. Number three, the Marubra Kid is a clear cut favourite. We'll be going to Clifford Park very shortly. But now take two. Race eight at Warwick Farm. Here's Ian Craig. And they look to be right. Painted Thunder. 190, 120, set now. 
And they're off this time. Painted Thunder jump reasonably, but Shanval very slowly away. And Ouch is going to lead. Settling down, it's Ouch narrowly from Lai Moon. Carly on third and Painted Thunder fourth. And then in Bali's boy as they settle down, followed by Telling Blow, Glen Idle, Fondle Way. Fusser next to last and Shanval is tacking on. 7.50 to go and the speedy Newcastle Mayor Ouch is the leader. About a length and a half or so in second posse is Carly on third. Lai Moon a length and a half. Telling Blow keeping Painted Thunder to Snookard, then Glen Idol, two and a half in Barley's Boy, followed by Fondleway Fusser, and Shan Valley's last, rounding the home corner, and Ouch is going very, very quickly, leads about two lengths on Carlion, Painted Thunder is slipping up on the inside, he's almost into the clear, he is now, if good enough, and Larry Cassidy hooks him around this leader, Ouch is still a length and a half clear, and then Telling Blow making up ground with Glen Idol, over on the rails in Barley's Boy, Ouch is still in front, Painted Thunder can't get her, Ouch holding Painted Thunder and it's Ouch and Melanie Mancolo. Ouch beat Painted Thunder and Shanvel. By gee, that was a run, the third horse. Close for fourth, telling blow with Fondle Way, Glen Idol. In Barley's boy, further back in the field came Fasa Carly and Lai Moon was last. And if you didn't hear what went on early and, uh, in the day... A little day. bit slow to go, Brodie's Rose. Getting away very quickly, True Reflection led. Dunbar from the wide alley went across quickly to second. Montview Dawn's going up, but is pratted out three deep and will have to go on with the job. They're followed then behind those by Miss Sequalo and the Maroubra Kid. Flash touches... He's coming back on.